Okay, math at work 11. This is actually your last official lesson for the curriculum. Yay! Uh, so we've been working on the trigonometry section, so we did a little bit of a review of trig that you should have been taught back in Math 10 or Math 10 at work, uh, depending on which course you were in before choosing this course. Uh, so we did that little lesson, kind of reviewing how to find missing sides, how to find missing angles using your sine, cosine, or tangent ratios. Um, then we looked at specifically solving questions involving angles of elevation, angles of depression. And now this final lesson is about how to solve uh, problems that involve multiple right triangles, right? So where you'd actually kind of have to do two things, right, in order to find what you're looking for, right? So sometimes the thing, the measurement that you're trying to find, you don't have enough information based on that one triangle, so you have to use a different triangle to find a missing side length, which can then get used uh, in the second, you know, part of the triangle that you need to, to look at, okay? So this entire lesson, there's not really a whole lot of definitions um, other than just kind of like focusing on what it is you need to be doing every time, uh, and it's just going to be a lot of examples showing you how we would solve this kind of stuff, okay? Uh, and then at the end of this lesson, you've got your worksheet, and the answers are there as well. You will notice on the answer sheet, um, my calculator was in the wrong mode until I got to the end. So all my setups are fine, and then my final answers are all scratched out, and I had to put new ones in. Uh, so just really make sure that you have put your calculators in degree mode um, so that you're not getting wrong answers like I was getting. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and then once we finish that, uh, you know, the lesson, time to kind of work through the worksheet, look at the answer key, uh, then I'll be posting an assignment on Monday for you. That'll be your last assignment for this course. And then you'll have, like I mentioned in my email, you'll have opportunity to kind of just say, hey, you know what, these are the topics that we learned before that I just still am a little bit iffy on. Can you, you know, give me some extra work or practice on that? Or can you help me, uh, you, can you teach this to me? I feel as though I missed it. Uh, and I'm more than happy to do that during these last couple of weeks, okay? So once you finish that last assignment, that's it uh, for like all of our curriculum for Math at Work 11. Uh, but again, just keep picking away at anything you just kind of didn't get a chance to look at yet. And then if you do have specific topics that you're like, yeah, I didn't really get that, can you go over it again? More than happy to, you know, give you a separate lesson or a Google Meet, uh, just one-on-one -on -one if, you, if you want that as well. All right, so let's get started on uh, multiple triangles. All right, so as mentioned, not a whole lot of definitions here. Biggest thing is just it's really, really important that you get your diagram set up correctly, all right? So a lot of questions, they give you the diagram, and that's great, and you can use them to, um, you know, find all the missing sides or angles, whatever you're doing, right? Uh, make sure that when you are looking at the diagram, though, you can indicate exactly where your right angles are in your triangles, right? Because obviously when you're labeling your side lengths and stuff, right, the side length across from the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. And that's going to be really, really important depending on what you're doing. Uh, you know, are you using sine, cosine, or tangent? Okay, so make sure you're doing that. Um, so, you know, make sure you've got your right triangles. If it helps, redraw the triangle separately uh, and then deal with one and then use that missing information to deal with the next. Uh, again, these questions often involve having to find one thing in order to find what you're actually looking for. So like shared sides or shared angles are very important with these types of questions. And sometimes it helps just to kind of come up with a plan of action of, okay, well, this is what I'm trying to find. I need this, but I don't have this. So I have to find this in order to get this, like just kind of working through that in your head first before you start writing stuff down. Okay. Uh, so we'll kind of, I'll talk you through that as we go through these examples. So in our first one, no context whatsoever, just a simple, here's this shape, and I'm asking you to find the length of J to K, okay? So again, let's just talk about how we would set that up, okay? So there's your that same diagram set up. So we're looking for this length from here all the way to here, okay? The only side length I've been given information about is the straight up and down side length AB, not even part of the overall big triangle, right? So you can kind of see that there's three different triangles here. There's the big one going J, K, B, right? But that is not a right triangle, right? Not a right angle, not a right angle, and the 60 plus the 15 is 75. So again, not a right angle. So we couldn't use any sort of, you know, even if we did have these two sides, we still couldn't use Pythagorean theorem because it only works for right triangles. We also have this smaller triangle though, J, A, B, Right? That is, in fact, a right triangle, because if that's a right angle and this is a straight line, this is also a right angle. Okay? Um, and then you've got this triangle, ABK. Again, a right triangle where you have one side length and one angle. Now, one side length and one angle is enough to find another missing side. Okay? So, again, we're looking for J all the way through K. 
Well, we don't have a triangle that involves that side, but we can break this up into two steps. We can say that this part here from J to A, we can call that X, and then this part here from A to K, we can call that Y, right? So this is what I was talking about when it comes to coming up with like an overall plan. Right? Okay, I need J to K. I can't find that in one step, so what can I do? All right, I can use just this triangle with the 15 degrees and the 3 centimeters to find side length X. Then I can use this triangle with the 60 degrees and the side length of 3 centimeters to find Y, and then I can just add them together and I can get my full length. Okay? So if we were to just look at this triangle here, right, JAB, we know that it's a right angle here, 15 degrees here, and then this is 3 centimeters here. Right, and we're looking for this, right? So there's my right angle, which means that directly across from that, that would be my hypotenuse. There's the angle that I have, so this would be considered the opposite, and then this would be the adjacent. So I have the adjacent side length, I'm looking for the opposite. The trig ratio that involves adjacent and opposite is tan, so I would set up tan of the angle, which is 15 degrees, is equal to opposite, which is x, divided by the adjacent, which is three. And then anytime we have a fraction, when we solve that, we multiply both sides by the denominator. So I multiply both sides by 3 here. So that would cancel. So whatever 3 times tan of 15 degrees is, that's going to be that side length of x, right? So you grab your calculator, you make sure that it is in fact in degree mode, which it is this time. And I do 3 times tan of 15, and I get a value here of 0 0.804 centimeters is equal to x. Okay, so that's that part. Now I can just look at this triangle here, right, a to b to k, and again, what I have is this 60 degree angle here, my 90 degree angles here, which means that this side length from b to k is the hypotenuse, the angle in question, this would be my opposite side length for y, and then the 3 again is the adjacent side length. Okay, so same thing again, I'm looking for the opposite, I have the adjacent, so I use my tan ratio once again, more of that board, right? So I can say, okay, tan of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite, so y divided by the adjacent of 3. Again, we have a fraction. When we're solving equations with a fraction, you multiply both sides by the denominator. So we multiply by 3 there, multiply by 3 there. So we do 3 times the tan of 60 degrees. That's equal to y. 3 times tan of 60. And we get that y is 5.196 centimeters. Okay, so now if we know that that's 0 0.804 and that's 5.196, the side length of J to K is just adding up the 0 0.804 plus the 5.196. So 0 0.804 plus 5.196, and we get a value of actually that ends up being exactly 6 centimeters. Okay? So there you go. Okay, so again, you'll see that the this was done here as well. Okay, so again, I, this one was done kind of in color, right, where you can see that there was the smaller triangle, right, same calculations. Uh, there was the other triangle right there in green, done there, and then you were just adding up to get that one. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one's got a little bit of a context to it. Okay, so in this one, a student wanted to know the distance between two particular carvings on a spirit pole. She measured the angle of elevation of each carving 15 meters from the base of the pole. The student drew the sketch below. What is the distance between the carvings to the nearest tenth of a meter? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is redraw that sketch uh, with just kind of the same idea, right? So we're kind of saying, okay, well, here's the pole here, and we're looking up, right? We're standing 15 meters away from the base, okay? And we're looking at two separate carvings. And in one of them, the angle of elevation is 35 degrees, right? So looking up, right, angling our eyes up at a value of 35 degrees, that brings us to the first carving. And then if we angle our eyes up 45 degrees, that's the second carving. Okay, so let's switch back to the video. All right, so I've kind of redrawn this here, right? So there's our spirit pole here. We're 15 meters away from the base. This would be the right angle. So like I said, this is our first carving, and that angle of elevation is 35 degrees. Looking up to the second carving, the whole thing is 45 degrees, 
Okay, we are interested in the distance between them, so this is our unknown that we want, just this little section. Okay, so that little section comes from this triangle here, which again is not a right triangle. Okay, we can figure out this inside angle, because if this big one's 45 and this one's 35, that's just a difference of 10, and you know that that's 10 degrees in there. But again, because this was at an angle, that's not a right triangle, and I don't have any of those side lengths, so it's not going to help me at all. However, what you can do is take a look at it instead as, well, what if we look at it, one, as the big triangle, right? Look at them separately. Here's the one going to the top, where that's a 45-degree angle, and you know the distance across the bottom is 15 meters, right? We could call this, let's say, A, okay? Right, and that would be this triangle here. And then we can look at just the one looking at the smaller one, Right, where again, you're still standing 15 meters away, it's still a right angle, but you know that this angle is 35 degrees, and we can call that B, right? So all of this is A, just this is B, and what you should notice here is that X and B combined give you A, right? So we're saying here that X plus B is equal to A, and if we just want X by itself, we can subtract B from both sides, so X is just equal to A minus B. So find the height of the first carving, find the height of the second carving, subtract them, and you get the difference between them. Okay? So these are kind of the triangles we're going to use uh, then in order to try and go from there. Okay? So I'll erase the big one for right now. Okay? And then just kind of go off of these. So let's say we're trying to find the height of the first carving here with A. Right? So again, what I have is this angle. This is considered the opposite side length. Right? This is my hypotenuse and down here is the adjacent. So once again, I'm using a tangent ratio, and you'll find you use tan a lot because tan involves things like measuring uh, flat distance away and then vertical height, right? It's not very often we're actually measuring the hypotenuse of things, okay? So that's why you'll see tan show up a lot, all right? Um, but sidebar, right? So again, tan here, so tan of 45 degrees is equal to the opposite which is A divided by the adjacent, which is 15. And again, you're just going to multiply both sides by the denominator there. So this is going to be 15 times the tan of 45 degrees is equal to A. And then what you get is 15 times tan of 45. And that's correct. It is 15 meters again, okay? It's a 45 degree angle here and here, right? So if the sum of the angles is 180, right? If that's 90 and that's 45, that would have to be 45, making it an isosceles triangle, meaning that these two side lengths would be the same. So just a little confirmation there. Okay, so uh, that first carving is 15 meters high. Then if we look at the second one, same idea. There's my angle. This is my opposite side length. That's the hypotenuse because it's directly across from the right angle. And once again, there's my adjacent. So I set up the same ratio again, tan, right, because it's opposite and adjacent. Tan of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is B over 15, which is the adjacent. Again, you're multiplying both sides by 15 to get rid of that fraction. So 15 times tan of 35 is equal to B. 15 times tan of 35, and we get a value here of 10.5 meters. Okay, so the first carving is 15 meters high, the second carving is 10.5 meters high, so the distance between them, we just need to subtract. Right, so 10 minus, or 15 minus 10.5, and we will get four and a half. Right, so there's four and a half meters in between the carvings. Okay, so again, you can look at uh, the solution there. It's the same idea, right, A, B, X, solving, for both and there's the difference okay all right moving on to question three so in this one you'll notice that we aren't given a diagram so this is where understanding what an angle of elevation and an angle of depression um, you know that's very important so when you read a question you can correctly draw the situation right and that was why I gave you that single question triangle check-in to show that you do understand how those those triangle setups work okay because they do get used further along so in this one, we have that a falcon is sitting in a tree 11.4 meters above the ground and eyes a squirrel and a chipmunk on the ground below. From the falcon, the angles of depression to the squirrel and chipmunk are 36 degrees and 47 degrees, respectively. 
how far apart are the squirrel and chipmunk to the nearest tenth of a meter? Okay, so I might have to kind of go back and forth on this one while drawing our diagram. Um, might be able to do this where I can see both at the same time. Just bear with me for a second. Okay. So we'll go bit by bit. All right, so falcon sitting in a tree 11.4 meters above the ground. So it's like, here's our tree. Okay, our falcon is sitting at a top, let's say. And so we know that this height here is 11.4 meters. Okay. Eyes a squirrel and a chipmunk on the ground below. So there's a ground hanging out here. There's a squirrel and a chipmunk on the ground somewhere. Uh, so we can maybe label this as point F for falcon. Now this one's angle of depression. So remember angle of depression was from the horizontal looking down, right? So if the falcon was looking straight, it, he would be looking like this. And then from that line, angles down, and if he angles down 36 degrees, like that, right, where that's a 36 degree angle, that's where um, he sees the squirrel, right? If he angles down even more, 47 degrees, this is where he sees the chipmunk. And we're being asked how far apart are the chipmunk and the squirrel. So this value here, okay? So this is very, very similar to that last question we just did. It's just kind of oriented in a slightly different way, okay? So again, what you can think of is, right, well, let's think of this first triangle. Let's call this G for ground. You think of the first one that goes G, F, C, where you know that this is the height, so that's 11.4. Um, and you would have known that if we went across this way, right, going to the C was the 47. That's 47 degrees, which if you're using properties of angles means that you know that this is also 47 degrees, okay? And you are solving for, let's just call, um, I guess again, we'll call this A, okay? So that would give us the distance from the base of the tree to the chipmunk, okay? And then you could do the same thing with the larger triangle, right? Where again, that would be G, that would be F, and then this is looking to the squirrel, and we can call that one side length B, right? Where all of that is B. And again, angle of depression, this was a 36 degree angle, which again, properties of uh, angles would dictate that this is a 36 degree angle as well. And you know that this height is 11.4 meters. So if you found B, from this one and you found a from this one if you just subtract them you can get x okay so again that's exactly what we're going to do so get rid of my top triangle there okay so the plan is get b and a subtract them and then you'll find the distance between them okay so in this case here to find the distance that chipmunk is we have this 47 degree angle inside the triangle so this would be the opposite side length a would be our adjacent side length, so once again, uh, tan, right? This is the side that we have, this is the side that we want, and it's adjacent and opposite, so that's a tan. So we go tan of 47 degrees is equal to opposite, so 11.4 divided by the adjacent of A. Okay, so remember this would be what we call a two-step trig problem, where in order to get rid of the fraction, you always multiply by the denominator. Whether that's a number or a variable, you always multiply by the denominator to get rid of the fraction. So I multiply by A on both sides, that gets rid of the fraction there, leaving me with just the numerator of 11.4, but that means that this is now A times the tan of 47, okay? It's not an actual value to calculate because you still have an unknown. But now that these are being multiplied, you can get A by itself by undoing that operation, dividing both sides by tan of 47 degrees. Okay, that cancels and you're left with a value of 11.4 divided by tan of 47 and that's now 10.63 meters. Okay, so that's how far away on the ground the chipmunk is from the base of the tree. We now do the same thing with the one with the squirrel, right? So again, we have this 36 degree angle inside the triangle, right, going directly across. That 11.4 would be the opposite side length. This would be the hypotenuse across from the right angle. 
meaning that the side we're interested in is adjacent. So again, I have the opposite. I'm interested in the adjacent. The trig ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is tan. So again, tan, this time we're using a 36 degree angle, is equal to opposite, 11.4, divided by the adjacent, which is our unknown B. Okay, and then again, it's the same process here, right? You're multiplying both sides by the denominator, so you get B times tan of 36 degrees, and by multiplying that side by B, it canceled, right? Uh, on that side, so you get B times tan of 36 degrees is equal to 11.4. Then you divide both sides by tan of 36 degrees here. Cancel, cancel. So B is equal to 11.4 divided by tan of 36, which is 15.69 meters, right? So chipmunk is 10.63 meters away. Squirrel is 15.69 meters away. The distance between them is just now taking the 15.69 minus the 10.63. So 15.69 minus 10.63, and we get a value of 5.06 meters, or around 5 meters apart. All right, so there's another one done. Right, here we go. Okay, so um, it does say nearest tenth of a meter, so that would end up just being, we'd round that to 5.1, right? But again, you see those exact same things happening here. Uh, you will notice in this one, what I've also done is an alternate arrangement where instead of using the properties of similar triangle or properties of alternate interior angles and saying that that 36 and that 36 and just using that 36 degree angle, um, in this one over here, I've said, okay, well, if that's 47 and I know that this would have to make a right angle of 90 degrees, I can do 90 minus 47 and get 43 and instead use the 43 degree angle using this as my opposite, and then I don't have to do the two-step trig, I just have to do the one-step trig. But you're still adding a step and trying to find that missing angle. But either way, you get the same value, okay? All right, next example. Um, so two buildings directly across from one another in a parking lot, okay? Building A is 19.3 meters from a car in the lot, and building B is 11.2 meters from the same car. Okay, so there's a car in the parking lot, it's on the ground in between two towers, um, building, yeah, so and it's not halfway, right? Uh, if the angle of depression from the top of building A to the car is 51 degrees and the angle of depression from the top of building B to the car is 62 degrees, determine which building is taller and by how much. Okay, so we'll likely go back and forth here uh, with this one as well. So... Where's my thing? Okay, so we'll kind of go back and forth. So again, what you've got is you've got two buildings, okay? There's a building here, there's a building here, and we've got this car that's not exactly halfway in between, right? So it's 13.9 meters from building A, uh, so it's a little bit farther away from one. So we'll call this one A, and we'll call this one B, and then this is the car. So the distance, I know you can't see that, but so 13.9 from building A and then from building B, 11.2, okay? Now, the next part of that question is about the angles of depression, okay? So if we're thinking about looking down on something, okay, if I'm really, really, really far up, okay, and then I am looking at something really far away, I don't really need to tilt my eyes down very far, right, in order to see that thing that's far away. However, if I'm not very far up and I'm looking at something farther than the ground, I have to look a lot further. So it's, you know, a good assumption to kind of say, well, the one that has the higher angle of depression is likely the shorter building because you have to angle your eyes down a lot more to see what it is you're looking for, okay? But if you're not comfortable with kind of making an assumption like that, just kind of draw it. And you might realize later, oh crap, I drew that wrong, but at least you were able to do the calculations and it was visually, you know, you could get it a good enough of a visual to kind of get it going, okay? So uh, if we look at this one, okay, so from the top of building A to the car, the angle of depression is um, 51 degrees, 
okay? So if I'm here at 51 degrees, okay, I'm at the top of building A, okay, so I'm at the top of here, and I'm angling my eyes down 51 degrees in order to see uh, that car, okay? And then at the top of building B, right, I have to look even further down here, right? I'm doing a much steeper look at an angle of 63 degrees in order to get down to um, building C, or to look at the car, right? The question's asking which building is taller, right? Go back again, right? Uh, determine which building is taller and by how much. So that would imply that we need to find the heights of each of these buildings, okay? So if I'm looking at just this one, building A, okay, that 51 degree angle is there, and if I don't worry about this part, Right, there would be my right angle, and this would be a 51 degree angle as well. And I could then look for what is the height of building A. Right, so again, looking at just that triangle, that would be an opposite side length, that would be an adjacent side length. Again, it's a tan ratio, but that's going to happen a lot because these are things we can measure accurately, right? Vertical height and horizontal distance. It's challenging to measure that hypotenuse, okay? Um, so again, tan of 51 degrees is equal to the opposite of A divided by the adjacent of 13.9, multiply both sides by the denominator, so it'd be 13.9 times the tan of 51 degrees is equal to our height of building A, 13.9 times the tan of 51, and we get a height of 17.2 meters is the height of building A, okay? We do the same thing over here with building B, or if that's 63, so's that. Okay, and we're looking for this height here. Okay, so again, it's a tan because this is the opposite. This is the adjacent side length. So this would be set up as tan of 63 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is B, over the adjacent, which is 11.2. Right, multiply both sides by the denominator of 11.2. Is equal to B. So 11.2 times the tan of 63, and we get that as a value of 21.99 meters is equal to that height, right? So that assumption that, okay, yeah, if I have to angle myself even, you know, looking more down, I'm actually at a taller building because I've got to look closer in, okay? Um, I think how I described it maybe was if we're thinking about something that was far away, you wouldn't have to look down very far, but if you're looking at something relatively close to you, you're really going to have to look straight down, okay? So can be tricky to think about, but it does make sense when you do it. So obviously building B is taller by how much is just a matter of subtracting these two, saying, okay, well, what's 21.99 meters minus 17.2 meters? And we get a 4.79 meters or around 4.8 meters, okay? So building B is 4.8 meters taller than building A. All right. Okay. Uh, once again. All right. Oh, I've somehow got a weird something going on in my answer key. Uh, me. I'll have to double check that uh, in terms of the math. Let me just quickly check. Oh, I used 62 instead of 63. What was the question? It should have been 62 the whole time. Okay, so that's my bad, um, but the concept is still the same there, right? So that should have actually been a 62 um, in my diagram that I was doing. But again, you get the, the same math exists there uh, and works out for us. Okay, so you can even see just that one degree kind of messes things up enough that, uh, right, the height becomes 21.06 instead of close to 22, right? And then that... 17.2 is still fine, okay? Um, all right, this is our last example here, though. Okay, so example five. Uh, so a woman is standing 22 meters from a flagpole and knows that the angle of depression to the bottom of the pole where uh, from her eye level is 14 degrees and the angle of elevation to the top of the pole is 18 degrees. Determine the height of the flagpole to the nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, so again, this is about the diagram, right? So if we're drawing this woman, uh, okay, so this woman is standing here, 
right? And from her eye level, right, this would be the horizontal line looking straight, but this is where the flagpole is, all right? We know that the distance between her and the flagpole is that 22.5 meters, and that would be the same down here as well. Okay, we're gonna assume her eyes are in line with her feet. Okay, uh, the question then says, the angle of depression to the bottom of her pole from her eye level is 14 degrees. So looking down, right? So looking to the bottom of the pole down this way, that's a 14 degree angle, okay? And then looking up to the top of the pole, right? Should be considered an angle of elevation. That angle is uh, 18 degrees. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase that for a second. All right, that's 18 degrees. So again, this would be another example where we just need to break this up into two separate triangles, right? You've got this one triangle here, right, where you have this adjacent side length and you're looking for the opposite, right? And that would be basically the height of the person. And then you've got this triangle here where again, you have the adjacent side length, you know that's 22.5, and you're looking for the opposite side length, and you add them together, and you end up getting the height. Right? Once again, you see that we're using tan ratios. It's not always gonna be tan, but so many of these real life application examples are tangent ratios, because those are the things that we can measure, right? The ones where you're gonna use sine and cosine are gonna be things where you're maybe like holding a string, or a ladder, right, where you actually know the lengths of those, but the concept is still the same. It just means you're using a different trig ratio. Okay, so once again, this would set up in that same way where looking at this triangle here, we would go tan of 14 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? Multiply both sides by 22.5. So 22.5 times tan of 14, we get that that is 5.6 meters. All right, so this woman is apparently 5.6 meters tall, so it's a very unrealistic question, so whoops. Um, but away we go, right? And then if we look to the top of the flagpole, uh, if we go tan of 18 degrees is equal to B over the 22.5, right? You'd multiply both sides by 22.5, so that would cancel, so it'd be 22.5 times the tan of 18 degrees is equal to B, 22.5 times tan of 18, and you get that that's 7.3 meters. So the height of the flagpole is 5.6 meters plus 7.3 meters. Right, 5.6 plus 7.3, and the flagpole is apparently 12.9 meters tall. All right, so perhaps really what we wanted to say is change this to feet and it's a little bit more realistic, right? Uh, and all of a sudden this is now 5.6 feet. That's a more realistic height of a person. All right, so that's probably the best way we could have uh, done this, right? So if we changed all this to feet instead of meters, uh, everything would have worked out a little bit better. Okay, and once again, this is because my calculator was in the wrong mode. So I'm gonna fix up those um, uh, edits there now in a second and you'll get those same values that I'm getting there at 12.9 uh, not 11.6 okay so I'll edit those and put them back up so once again what you have is a, a worksheet for you to look at solutions are provided like I said there's some mistakes like not mistakes but cross outs uh, because again my calculator was in the wrong mode my darling daughter had been playing with it and I didn't think to check it uh, so all of my values were just a little bit off, but the setups were all fine, okay? Again, if you're stuck on anything, please just shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to uh, answer your emails or we can set up a Google Meet. Again, if you're just kind of stuck and want me to walk you through it step by step, I'm happy to do that. Uh, just, just reach out, okay? Good luck.